Good evening. Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of August 14th, 2014. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight and I'm presiding. Um, as is our custom, we will open before we convene the hearing with, uh, before we convene the meeting with uh, public comment. And I ask everyone to understand the rules of public comment, that you're limited to three minutes. That doesn't mean you have to fill all three minutes, if, but you're welcome to. And you can speak on any topic uh, of your choosing. It doesn't have to be stuff that we're addressing tonight in the council. And um, with that caveat, I'd ask the following as I uh, call your name to come up, state your name, and your address. And John Bell Cassis is first. Hello, good evening. My name is Donna Bell Cassis, and I live in 11 Country Way in Florence. Um, I'm here tonight to let you know that I'm putting together another Florence Night Out, which is a night celebrating creativity through community. Um, the last one was May 1st, and the next one is coming up on a Friday, September 19th, from 5.30 to 8.30, and it will be a night full of performance, dance, music, art openings. Um, I will mention briefly that I will have six art pods, which are pop-up art spaces that will be distributed throughout downtown Florence as a sort of uh, walking art tour along with special exhibits. And um, I'd like to formally present to the council on September 4th um, with a presentation of what has been done and what is going to happen in the fall. So hopefully get everyone excited about this event. Great. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> uh, Tom Pease, please. Yep. Counselors, my name is Tom Pease and I live at 130 Spring Street in Florence. I am the commander at the VFW Post 8006 in Florence and my family owns 1812 Paint and Body. Uh, this year I am here to announce the third annual Salute to Summer, which will be held at Look Park, the Pines Theater, on September the 6th. Uh, the presenters this year are the VFW and my family's business, 1812 Paint Body. We are presenting this uh, concert and entertainment venue to benefit the Northampton Recreation Department and all the proceeds from the ticket sales, which are $20 per person for the concert, all the profits from that are going to go directly to the Northampton Recreation Department and the Florence Fields. Um, <coughs> some of the things that will be happening that day, uh, we're going to have free uh, face painting for the kids. Th this starts at, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, right in front of the Pines Theater. We're going to have free face painting, clowns, a couple of bounce houses, balloon twisting, and for every adult that shows a uh, ticket to the concert, their children can ride the train free all afternoon. So uh, it's kind of like our kickoff for the Florence Fields. Um, we're going to have live entertainment by uh, Union Jack, who does a Beatles tribute. We have Joe Pucci who does some uh, do, uh, surf sounds. Uh, one of my favorites that are Bronx Wanderers, and they do 50s through the 70s doo-wop, and it's a Las Vegas-style show. Uh, this is a rain or shine event, so if it rains, I'm going to rent a huge tent. I'm going to make sure everybody still has a good time. Um, the reason I'm doing this is two years ago, we sat on a fence and we saw what was going to take place or what was happening across the street from us. We stayed very neutral. Our family did. We own a business there. We just watched everything unfold. We also own a towing business, and as, as things went along, I was watching and wondering, you know, what's going to I saw the four soccer fields and the fifth field and the two ball, ball diamonds. And we're enthusiastic about it because it's going to get the children probably away from the, the texting and the computers. Not that I'm against it, but we do a lot of towing and we see what happens to these young adults and whatever. It's going to give a wonderful opportunity to all of our young kids to do this, this place is fabulous. I never believed that you could have never told me two years ago it was going to come out to be as pristine as it is. So we're proud to put this concert together and get all our proceeds we can to the rec department. I, I have no idea what the funds are there, but I know that they're always going to need something to finish either the ball field, I mean the playground, the playground equipment, 
and long-term long -term care. So we're pretty excited about it. And you can go to our website, salute to the number two summer, and all the information is going to be on there. And I'll be back in a couple weeks so we can have a question and answer thing, okay? But uh, this is our kickoff. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ellis Smolensky, please. Good evening, City Council, residents of Northampton. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to speak with you this evening. As you may or may not know, families are acting as caregivers for their loved ones who are living with mental illness. With a 10-year or more wait for Section 8 and more than a 5-year wait for public housing, families are providing necessary housing. Families are providing 24-hour care in many cases. This means they often act as case managers and provide counseling services also as sometimes those living with mental illness may not recognize they are in fact mentally ill. We have the honor and privilege of working with these families who are trying to help their loved ones by providing a support system that includes basic needs, often with the earnings of the family or the retirement funds. <coughs> While I agree that a family can play a vital role as a support system, we know that often families are not educated about what mental illness really is and what resources are available to, end, to them. Mental illness is not a <coughs> flaw. You can't just pull yourself up by the bootstraps. It affects young and old alike. Mental illness can be very treatable. Left untreated conditions can worsen, lead to homelessness, incarceration, and even death by suicide. There are over 30,000 suicides per year. 90% have been linked to mental illness. 22 veterans a day commit suicide, many living with post-traumatic stress disorder. The suicide prevention hotline is one 800 273 talk 24 7. Families get burnt out and they may or not know the warning signs that require a call to a crisis line or even what a crisis is. We teach families how to have a crisis file, where to call. Be very proud if you're Northampton Police Department. Many of them and most of them have taken the NAMI training for crisis intervention training. Our own president was one of the teachers. The next National Alliance on Mental Illness Family to Family course will take place on set starting September 6th in Northampton. Pre-registration is required and space is limited. This course is also being offered in other Massachusetts locations. This 12-week course is offered free of cost for families or friends of individuals living with a severe brain disorder that discusses the clinical treatment of those disorders and teaches the knowledge and skills to cope more effectively. The course has measured outcomes and has been noted as an evidence-based practice by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration. Over 300,000 and more have graduated and completed this course, authored by Dr. Joyce Berlin. By taking this course, you will also realize that you are not alone as a family living with a loved one who is living with mental illness. You can contact the National Alliance on Mental Illness of Western Mass at 413-786-9139 or go to www.nami.org to learn more about NAMI. NAMI believes where there is help, there is hope. Special thanks to everyone who has helped us spread the word. Our sincere thanks to Mayor Narkowitz, who recognizes mental health as a concern with both Mental Health Month and Week. Special thanks to Wendy Mazza, our clerk, our city clerk, Pamela Powers for always welcoming me to share information, to Cooley Dickinson, Area Churches, Reverend Ware, WHMP, WGBY, Daily Hampshire Gazette, The Republican, and NCTV <coughs> for working with NAMI to spread the word. We greatly appreciated appearing before the Social Service Veterans Culture Recreation Committee meeting as presenters. We can't thank you enough. Finally, I'd like to conclude with some words from our medical director, Dr. Ken Duckworth. Robin Williams will be missed. We wish him peace. We offer our condolences and thoughts to his families as we say goodbye to a fearless and beloved entertainer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Barry Roth, please. Um, I was My name is Barry Roth. I live at 88 Acrebrook Drive, Florence, Massachusetts. I, I'm here today because on uh, June 6th, there was an article in the Gazette regarding the extinction of animals in general, and sp specifically the spotted turtle. And uh, I had spoken here about three years ago uh, uh, concerning Cardinal Way and what I, what is a massacre field. And I'm here now to uh, document that because uh, one picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, I'll start with the picture that uh, I presented three years ago. Um, this is a cr crushed painted turtle, and what was being done at the time to prevent any more of, of that was they put up a sign, Reptile and Amphibian Crossing, um, 
it wasn't very successful. Uh, so what they did was they made an honest attempt to put scratch marks in the curb so the turtles could climb up over it. But um, that is, uh, you get it. Um, it cost, uh, uh, when you build on wetlands, it costs a lot of money um, to make protection for the animals that live there. That's why, in general, there are laws against doing it. I don't know. I wasn't here at the time. Cardinal Way was allowed to be built. Um, I certainly would have done everything in my power to, to prevent it. But uh, it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy because it's where I go walking, and I've been witness to it. Um, on one day, I found five turtles. Uh, that were killed by traffic over there. You no longer see turtles. There's a big pond on Cardinal Way. You no longer see turtles there. They're, they're gone. Occasionally, a turtle might come in because of the Mill River that flows through it. I imagine this uh, snapping turtle was about 20 years old. Um, there were two of them uh, that day that I found. This stench, he was so big. I have a pretty big foot. You can see he's a lot bigger than my foot. Um, here's a photo of another painted turtle. This was more recent. Um, this is a clear picture. This is Cardinal Way. Uh, the pond's to the right over there. Now the thing about this is uh, you see that it's a living creature. Uh, it was run over and just like anything else it experienced pain. Its head is erect. Its intestines are pouring out. And just in case you can't see that one too clearly, here's a bigger one. Uh, its eyes are closed. They, it endured a great deal of pain. It's intestines are out here. The whole road was just covered in blood. Um, this cannot be permitted. The same, the attitude that it costs too much to protect them is the same attitude that goes on in Africa where they hunt uh, elephants for their ivory. And, and they say it costs too much not to kill the elephants. Um, so we have to do something about it. We've got CPA mon uh, money. Uh, I want to put a cricket in the council's head that something be done, whatever it costs, and the CPA money should be used for the things it was intended for, which amongst is conservation and not other good causes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mike Kirby, please. Good evening, gentlemen and ladies. Mike Kirby, 134 North Street, Northampton, Mass. Let's see, I'd like to do 49 <coughs> seconds in praise of uh, the DPW the other night. Um, during the intense rainstorm, um, the, uh, the brook, which is called the North Street, it's called the Market Street Brook, was going over its banks again, headed toward, uh, headed toward Board 1 and toward, uh, toward State Street. And, and the rain was coming down the hairs, and, and Ned Huntley was out there, uh, Jib Loria was out there, a ton of people were out there, and they were sandbagging, and the water was just coming right toward these houses. And they managed to pull open some manholes and 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 sandbag and stopped it, and and that's really above not above and beyond, but it was it was hard good hard work. But it's a very fragile thing down there. Okay, second point. Um, I want to talk about the the fire up on the hill, up on um, Horse Mountain. Um, why did they fire, fight the fire from the bottom of the hill? Why did they block the main access road, and when I say they, the Northampton Hot Fire Department, with hoses and pumps? Why didn't they have a plan for fighting a fire outside the fire district. They knew there was no pressure in there, in the, not enough pressure in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the hydrants, and yet they pumped from them. And then in the process of trying to boost the pressure, 
they they ruins didn't ruin, but they they made some messes down there on Country Way. Um, so those are some questions, and finally, I understand um, that you're going to consider um, nominating Patrick Oggins to the Board of Public Works tonight. Is that true? I, it, normally our rules don't allow me to respond, but it is on the agenda, that's correct. Yes. What? Normally the rules don't allow us to respond to questions, but yes, that is on the agenda. Tonight. Okay, good. Let me take 12 seconds to say no. <laughs> and basically you should know why. Um, that, that, that Mr. Gaines has had too much influence in this town for too long that it, he has been instrumental in making Barrett Street Swamp as flooded as it always is and flowing over on its banks because he, tore, he pushed through the Carlin Drive development, which cost the public works about five or $6,000 for dredging back then. So please think twice, think three times. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, Roy, I'm guessing this is your name here by yeah. process of elimination. Well, must be the last one, right? That, that's correct. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, City Council, ladies and gentlemen, the audience. Uh, my name is Roy C. Martin, 81 Conn Street, Northampton, Massachusetts. Tonight I come before you because I had a big question. When I first walked in here, right, I was, uh, actually I was kind of full of rage uh, because when I ran for mayor here in the city, I ran for mayor so that I could be the mayor of the whole city, right? The rich, the poor, the people up on Elm Street, the people down in Ward 1, you know, the homeless. It didn't matter. It didn't matter what color you were or anything else, right? It didn't matter if you smoked, you didn't smoke, right? You were a person, you were a human being, and you deserved to be treated that way. Well, now I come to find out that the Board of Health, right, seems to have all the power in this city and uh, sets down rules like you have to have a state ID in order to uh, buy a pack of cigarettes. Now, I'm 73 years old, and I went down here to buy a pack of cigarettes for a friend of mine, and the kid, this kid, this snot-nosed kid, asked me for an ID. I said, for what? I'm 73 years old, all right? Uh, you know, here's a kid. <coughs> he didn't fight for his country. He hasn't been overseas. He hasn't been anywhere. He's been Northampton and where we come from before that, all right? And he's asking me for an ID. Then I come to find out when you have an ID, you can't just have any ID. You have to have a state ID from the from the state, which means you have to have either a driving license or you have to have an ID. And if you get an ID from there, you have to go over and pay for it. How a lot of these homeless people don't have money to go buy an ID and pay for it and everything? And a lot of the homeless are the ones that are smoking, right? Because they have nothing more in their life. And you people at city council, you let them go ahead. I mean, the city council is supposed to have two votes on everything, I believe, in the city. And you let them go ahead and do all this stuff, which two towns of Springfield, Holyoke, they don't have the same thing in either one. All right, I walked in any one of them places. All right, my friend went to Westfield. She's from Westfield, went to Westfield. She bought a pack of cigarettes. They didn't ask her for any ID or anything else. So, uh, you know, I think you have to relook things and, you know, figure out what is going on with this city, right? You know, are we a group of people here, all city councilors, that is representing the whole city? Or are we representing a few people, a few non-smokers, right, that are out there that decide you can't smoke here, you can't smoke there, you can't do this, you can't do that, right? Pretty soon you won't be able to breathe. So, uh, you know, them are the things that really irk me, right? And like I said, right, you know, when I ran for mayor, I ran for mayor for the whole city, no matter if you were rich, you were poor, or how you were, right? What color you were, what brand you were, right? Even the puppy dogs on the street corner, all right? They all vote. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Um, that's all we have signed up. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak at this time? I will ask the secretary to call the roll. Here. Present. Here. Present. Here. 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 We have a quorum. In fact, everybody's in their place and they're with their bright shiny face. Welcome to our well, it feels like end of summer meeting tonight. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what happened to summer, but <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, let's see. First on the, we, we have scheduled the public hearing for National Grid. Um, this is a poll petition for Pilgrim Drive. And I believe I thought I saw a proponent somewhere in the room. <laughs> Good evening, members of the council. Lisa Jasinski with National Grid. Excuse me, Lisa. Hang on just a second. I'm going to ask the council to actually call uh, to. Oh, okay. Move to open Sorry. hearing. There's a second. second. All those in favor of opening the hearing, please. Aye. 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 Okay. Just looking for permission to set a poll on the town property to service a house at the end of the street. Right now they have a long service that goes to their house. It's a little low over the cul-de-sac. And we'd like to get a poll in on that side of the street in order to raise it. I have to say that this is kind of a tentative proposal. We'd like to have the permission in, in, if, in order to go this route if need be. They're now considering um, the possibility of a poll on the other side of the house, but I'd like to know that if, if we have to resort to this poll on public property just before the house, um, that we would be able to set one there. So you're basically asking for this as an option, so? We are. Any questions? No other questions, any other discussion? Though? Are there any opponents to the proposed poll on Pilgrim? No? Mm -hmm. I'll right. move to close the hearing. Second it. Okay. Motion made and second to close the hearing. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, to uh, grant the permit. Second. <coughs> uh, any discussion? All those in favor of granting the permit, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have no presentation scheduled tonight. Uh, no communications from the mayor. In fact, no mayor. The mayor. <laughs> we. The school committee. This is an odd scheduled meeting. We're actually coming up short with department people because the mayor is presiding over the school committee tonight, and uh, planning board is also convening tonight. So we won't have anyone from the planning board, but they will be available for second reading on questions and. We also have the capacity the table should some of those things come up, but we're we're on our own tonight. But so so the um, so why don't we move to? Uh, oh, actually, I'm sorry. One minute announcements. I don't want to get Council Labarge. Thank you. Um, each one of you councilors have a flyer that I have put on your desk. The Committee on Social Services, Veterans, Cultural and Recreation are and we're posting two public hearings and the topic is the resolution on vibrant sidewalks the first public hearing will be monday september 15th from 5 p.m to 6 30 p.m and the location will be the city council chambers the second public hearing is tuesday october 14th from 7 o'clock p.m to 8 30 p.m and that location will be the Florence <coughs> Civic Center. And I want to take, thank Councilor Alyssa Klein for booking that at the Florence Civic Center. Thank you. So I wanted to announce that. Any other one the um, <clears throat> Historic Northampton uh, did a, an interesting uh, photography project um, this spring. And as a result, there's lots of interesting uh, photos of uh, Northampton and Florence and Leeds that were taken. And Historic Northampton is going to display them for the first time on Saturday, August 23rd, from 7 to 9 on the Historic Northampton uh, grounds. And there's also going to be music and Harold's ice cream and <coughs> that kind of thing. So hope everyone can consider going. <coughs> Is 
Uh, the secretary would like to know, AM or PM? It's going to be PM at night, yes. It will not be an early <laughs> photographic but exhibit. The, no, that's true. It's a good question. It's going to be outside, and they're going to display it. I think they're going to project it, and so the darkness is uh, in, in their favor in this case. Northampton selfies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other announcements? Okay. Uh, we'll move to um, the approval of the minutes. Move to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? Um, I just have a, a typo to correct on the Transportation Parking Commission. So can I pull those out? Uh, that's when we get to when we get to those minutes. This is a minute. So oh, I'm sorry. My mistake. My mistake. Um, any comments or discussion on the minutes of the council, the last council meeting, which was so so long ago, back when summer was just a promise, <laughs> unfulfilled. Um, all those in favor of accepting the minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Now we're moving to the reports of the. We have the appointment. I have the reports of committees and appointments. Blah blah. blah. We have the. <laughs> we now we move to the minutes and uh, Councilor O'Donnell, if you want to, you want to address the typo in your. In yeah, this is something uh, the council clerk um, brought to my attention, so I, I thank her for that. And I, I've told her these um, these amendments, but the amendments are very simple. I, the title should, of course, be uh, minutes, not meeting agenda. But more importantly. Um, the minutes that we approved at the meeting that the minutes describe were for uh, May 20th, 2014, rather than June 17th, 2014. You said the wrong date on there. Good catch. Um, all right, so we're for, this is first for the TPC minutes as they were amended. So uh, I'll accept a motion to accept those. Right, move on. Acceptance. And all those in favor of approving the TPC minutes aye. as amended, aye. please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Now, the rest of them, do you want to move as a group? Yes. Move as a group. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion on the minutes as a group? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. I just have to find out where I put my agenda on my on my camera. Well, yes. <coughs> oh, there's one of these paper things. <laughs> Dangerous. Oh, jump start. Uh, we're up to appointments. Uh, this is the appointment to the Board of Public Works, Patrick Goggins, 20 Bridge Road. Uh, the term uh, starts July 2014 to expire March 2015. That's to fill the unexpired term of K. Christopher Hellman. A positive recommendation from the Committee on Rules, uh, Orders, Appointments, and Ordinances. Is there a motion? So second. 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 Discussion on the appointment. Uh, Councilor Barge. Yes. Um, as a city councilor, I received three calls. I was very surprised myself to see Patrick Goggins um, going for an appointment. Some of the calls that I received had to deal with the past. And as a city councilor, this is not the past. Looking at what Patrick has done, being on committees here in the city, I think he definitely deserves to be on the Board of Public Works. There's no question about it. It has nothing to do with the past. I'm looking at exactly what he has done, how many committees that he has volunteered on for the city. So I'm gonna support this. Any other discussion on the appointment? Um, do, oh boy, I'm sorry, I'm really spacing out. Did we make a motion? We didn't, didn't actually uh, have a I, motion. It was moved yeah. and seconded. It was moved and seconded. Okay, no further discussion. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? The appointment is approved. And we move on to the next one, which I now have. I'm back online. Okay. So hmm. <laughs> it's, um, we're going to recess for finance. Uh, the and and by the way, um, <laughs> well, I'll let I'll let Council Murphy handle this because <laughs> it's going to sound like an auction block. But um, we're, so we're recessing for finance, and Council Murphy is the the chair of finance, and I I pass the figurative gavel on to you. Thank you, Mary. All right, Mary. Yeah, he's so Mary slipping finance. back. <laughs> Pam, would you call a roll of finance? I talked to Mary this week. That's why I, she's in my head. Here. 
here. Excellent. Now, the f we have a bunch of street acceptances and finance that will then reappear in council tonight. <coughs> What I'm, I'm going to, what I might suggest is, I'm going to read the first one its entirety, and then just read portions of the rest of them because they're all pretty much the same in format. And I'm going to, I'm going to pass over two of them because I have a conflict on two of them where I shouldn't vote on them. So I'm going to do the bulk of them minus those. Is anyone else conflicted on any of the street acceptances? Uh, just, not in. I mean, not no, as a member of. Not, finance, not in finance, but when it comes. But to it, just for the for the record, um, I do also have a. Uh, possible conflict or is I'm a resident of one of the streets so um, then what I'll do is read read the first one its entirety and then just let you know what the other streets are and what the survey dates are for them so that I don't read the same thing over 12 times All right the so in its entirety in the in the City Council August 14th 2014 <laughs> upon the recommendation of the mayor order that whereas a petition has been duly filed to lay out and accept prospect court as a public way and whereas the petition has been referred to the planning board and the board of public works and whereas the board of public works has held a duly noticed public hearing on the petition to lay out and to accept the public way and whereas both the planning board and the board of public works have recommended laying out and accepting prospect court as a public way now therefore it be ordered that the city council authorizes the acquisition by gift purchase eminent domain or otherwise an easement in and over parcels of land shown as prospect court on a plan entitled plan of land in northampton massachusetts hampshire county surveyed for the city of northampton dated february 10th 2014 for the purpose of laying out establishing and accepting a public way, way thereon further that the city council hereby lays out establishes and accepts as a public way the parcels to be acquired hereunder, and further that no damages shall be payable as a result of any of the taking authorized herein and no betterment shall be assessed as a result of laying out and establishing and accepting such a public way so that's what they sound like in their entirety and then i'm going to go through the other streets and and just take portions of them for you um this one is for lawn avenue and it was sent to the planning board and the board of public works and approved and now therefore be ordered the city council authorizes the acquisition by gift purchase eminent domain or otherwise of an easement over parcel shown as lawn avenue that plane plan was dated january 29th 2014. <clears throat> the next one is uh, a petition for strawberry hill as a public way it was sent to the planning board and the board of public works had a public hearing was approved so now th therefore be ordered the city council act authorizes the acquisition of strawberry hill with a plan uh, that was dated april 12 2013. the next one is a petition to accept tyler court as a public way again sent to the planning board and the board of public works both approved it um, so now therefore be it authorized that the city of Northampton accepts Tyler Court plan dated February 10th, 2014. Um, Warner Row was withdrawn. So if you'll notice Warner Row isn't gonna happen tonight. It was withdrawn from consideration. The next one would be a petition to accept the layout of Wilder Place in Northampton. Again, planning board and board of public works approval and the plan for Wilder Place was dated January 23rd, 2004. The next one is to accept Carpenter Avenue as a public way. Again, Public Works and Planning Board approval. The plan for Carpenter Avenue uh, was dated January 24th, 2014. The next one is a petition to accept the layout for Bratton Court as a public way, approved by Planning Board and the Board of Public Works. And the plan for Bratton Court was dated January 28th, 2014. Uh, the next petition is to accept the layout of Isabella Street in Northampton, approved by the Planning Board, approved by the Board of Public Works. And the plan for the layout of Isabella Street is dated April 12th, 2013. The next one is to accept the layout for Church Street as a public way, Planning Board and Board of Public Works approval. The layout uh, plan for Isabella Street was April 12th, 2013. That's Church Street, actually. Oh, that's Church Street. Right. We did Isabella Street. Yeah, that's Church Street. Your favorite street. <laughs> and uh, and the, the final one in this group would be a layout for Edwards Square as a public way, approved by the Planning Board, the Board of Public Works, 
and the layout plan for Edwards Square was dated June 7th, 2013. So do we have a, a motion on this group? Make a motion to group? move it to full city council. And a second? Second. Second. Any discussion on this group? All in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Okay. And then the, <coughs> the remaining two, um, the first one is a petition to accept the layout for Baker Hill Road, and it was approved by the Planning Board, approved by the Board of Public Works. The plan of the layout of Baker Hill Road was done on March 10th, 2014. And then the final one uh, would be to accept the layout for Owaga Avenue as a public way, approved by the Planning Board, Board of Public Works, and the layout plan for Owaga Avenue was done May 7th, 2014. Do we have a motion on that one? Make a motion. Second. 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 Okay. All in favor, uh, please say aye. 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 And aye. These two, I'm going to recuse myself on and not vote because I have a conflict on those two. All right. Um, then the next thing is with regards to uh, how we account for retiree health costs. Um, in the City Council, August 14th, 2014, upon the recommendation of the Mayor, order that whereas. Northampton has been prohibited from counting retiree health costs in net school spending calculations. And whereas the legislature has passed legislation that directs the commissioner of elementary and secondary education to begin a four year phase in of equal increments to include health costs, uh, health care costs for retired school employees as part of net school spending for any district which accepts this section of the law and in which such costs were not considered as part of net school spending in fiscal year 1994. Uh, so order that the City Council accepts the provision of outside Section 260 of the Fiscal Year 2015 General Appropriations Act, which provides for a four-year phase in beginning in FY 2016 to include in equal increments to include health care costs for retired teachers as part of net school spending under Chapter 70 for the Northampton Public Schools and for Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School. Do we have a motion on this one? And then we can have Susan come Yes, I have a motion on it, and I'd like to um, recognize Susan. You got a second? Second. Okay. Uh, and we want to recognize Susan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. She can explain Aye. to us the, the accounting reason for this change. Okay. I think you all got a memo earlier this week from the mayor about this. Um, Right now, net school spending is the absolute minimum that a community has to spend on education, and it's measured by the end of the year report that the school districts, both Smith Folk and NPS, submit to the Department of Ed. And back when ed reform came in in 1994, the teacher health insurance costs were in the city budget. Uh, they were not reflected in the documents that we were submitting to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed, at that time DOE. So when the formula got set for Northampton, retiree health insurance for teachers and other school staff was not included. We're one of, I think, um, 125, 127 communities in the state that health insurance is outside of the formula for net school spending. All the other districts across the state get to count that towards their net school spending. So for years, the MMA <coughs> has been pushing to get this so that the playing field is more level for all communities. Because it really just was a fluke of how you were accounting for this back in 1994. So finally, this has passed. Um, we're so over net school spending um, when you take the two districts together um, that it's not, we're, you know, that it's not uh, absolutely necessary, but it does make, when they calculate our net school spending, it will make comparisons to other districts more apples to apples because we will be able to count that. And as you know, health insurance for any employees, it's a pre pretty significant chunk of the salary package. So when you add retiree health insurance to this, it increases what we can put on paper as what we're spending on schools. Council Um We received the um, letter by email from the mayor last night going through this and I want to thank him for doing that. That was extremely helpful. What I'm getting out of this is that we're looking at being fair and equal here, correct? And that in 1994, you could not do what we could do now, okay, to make it fair and equal. Right. 
And Is that correct? Correct. And it's being phased in over several years because the, you know, some communities that, that are right at the edge of net school spending, in other words, they may be just meeting net school spending, this is going to be a tremendous help to them. But if they counted it all at once, then they might actually not even have to add more money to their school budget. So for, that's why they're doing a phase in, so that um, any community that's kind of right at the cusp that's now going to take advantage of this, that it's going to be phased in so it doesn't have a detrimental effect on their school budget. So Susan, what it will actually do reading this that it's going to provide our city finally to receive equal credit right for the retired teachers health care spending which they did and we did not have right. since 1994. correct other uh Councilor dwight uh, we, back in 1994 with that reform actually northampton kind of suffered because we in some respect <coughs> we, we have not been particularly beneficiaries of the largesse of the state when it came to uh, ed funding principally because of the snapshot that they took of us in 1994 which right. did not include these expenditures right. do our fortunes improve with this adjustment or th the fact that they're making this adjustment for all the other cities that also been likewise came uh, basically short assessed i mean do, do, it, is there a prospect you know, the Chapter 70 formula has changed since 1994, and, and it's changed twice. And each time that it's changed, it has not been beneficial to Northampton. Right. Um, until the Chapter 70 formula changes again, um, this will have no impact on that because we're right now pretty much a minimum aid community. So we're just getting the absolute minimum, which is if you don't have any other types of aid that they're going to give you, they give you the 75 or or $100 per pupil. And for the last several years, that's all we've gotten is the minimum aid. So this number isn't going to really change that. And we're above net school spending as well, so it's not like it's going to, you know. Right. But it will help us when we do comparisons to other districts, when we look at per pupil costs, this this expenditure that we haven't been getting credit for will now increase our spend what will look like our spending per pupil thanks mm -hmm. other questions so essentially in 94 it was sort of random we ended up with these other communities <coughs> because of where it showed up in our budget right. so this does not involve spending any new money right. this is simply when you do your reporting uh, uh, for net school spending you can now move it from the city side to that report because it is in fact money that's spent on schools right yeah. and it will okay. in, it will increase what we show that we spend on schools by over a million dollars because mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of retirees in the, in the school system mm -hmm. um, you know because teachers even though they're not in our retirement system they do get their health insurance from us and then there's all the ancillary school staff custodians and etc et so mm -hmm. there's a lot of staff on the school side that get their health insurance so we'll will get the benefit of, of a fuller picture of what Northampton spends to support education. And uh, any other questions in finance? Then all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. The next, uh, the next three are things Susan's probably going to want to comment on, too. Uh, the next one. In City Council, August 14, 2014, upon the recommendation of the Mayor, order that the City Council approves a $1,500 budget for the Commission on Disabilities to be used for supplies, events, travel, meetings, printing, mailings during the fiscal year 2015, said expenditures to come from the Commission on Disabilities Fund established under Chapter 40, Section 22G, and it is funded by handicapped parking violations. And I think everybody probably remembers when we did that. So do we have a motion on this in finance? Motion to recognize. You get a motion to approve? Yes. Okay, second? Second. Second. All right, and Susan can explain this one to us. Okay. Uh, we set up this account, this fund, a couple of years ago. It's not one of the revolving funds. Um, the revolving funds you authorize every year, and whatever department it is gets to expend from that without coming back to you. You basically authorize it once a year. This particular fund, though, has to get established under a separate <coughs> section. So what that means is the money from the handicapped parking fines goes into it, but in order for the Commission on Disabilities to expend from it, they need approval from you each and every time that they want to spend. 
Um, they've come with some larger items, I think the PA system, and I think our intent is that if there were any large items, those would continue to come to you. But there's been a number of times in the last year where the commission has come to you for $100 to do a banner. Uh, right now they would like $100 to do refreshments for a particular disabilities meeting. Um, so rather than kind of keep coming to you with $100 increments, we thought it might be best to kind of figure out what would be the small needs of the Commission on Disabilities over this fiscal year. Uh, set that cap at 1500 and then at the end of this year, that authorization will go away. We'll do this again each year so that you can have, a, you know, that you continue to have control and say over how that money's spent, but give them a little leeway to do some of the smaller things without having to come each and every time. Mm -hmm. Any questions on this? Uh, Council Zubar. Um, we did have a meeting on August 6th on the Commission on Disabilities very early in the morning, about quarter of nine, and there was great concerns. Um, our director um, from the Senior Center, I had talked to her in regards to, it's really ridiculous for us to have to keep coming for $100. So we talked with Susan and set up a budget for the year, which really is a small budget for the year of 2015 of 1,500. That's a small budget. So um, we were looking at expenses for doing printing, mailings, supplies, events, travel, and meetings. And yes, we needed that $100 because we are having a very special event on September 16th, and we are and have been calling for the first time now, this is gonna be a good size event, ADA coordinators, coordinators throughout all the towns and cities, and right now I think we have like about 23 that are attending already from different towns, and it's to work with the town, so we don't wanna keep coming back for $100, so. This is why we're here. Any other question on this one? Then all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. And the last one relates to the parking <coughs> garage. Um, in City Council, August 14, 2014, upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that whereas the FY15 capital plan approved $150,000 from the parking receipt for res parking receipts reserved for appropriations to fund the structural improvements at the EJ Gear parking garage, including repairs to the epoxy floor, joint ceiling, additional structural repairs to the metal components on the stairs, and repainting of the bridge that connects the garage to Thorns Marketplace. Whereas the project has been formally bid and the bids have come in higher than originally estimated, um, therefore we'd like to, uh, therefore to adequately fund the projects, uh, the following actions are proposed that $42,000 appropriated on September 1st, 2011 for parking meter upgrades from the parking receipt for reserve for appropriations that has not been used for that original project is hereby reprogrammed to the parking garage structural repair project approved as part of the FY15 capital. And that $45,170 be appropriated from the parking receipts reserve for appropriation account to the parking garage structural repair project again as approved as part of the FY15 capital plan. Do we have a motion on this one? Make a motion. Second? Second. Okay, and Susan can tell us about this okay. one. Um, as part of the FY15 capital plan, you approved 150,000 uh, to be spent on maintenance at the garage. Uh, the bids came in and the bids for the structural repairs, they got opened about two weeks ago, and the low bid, which included three alternates, is 205550 plus this $10,000 for engineering. And we wanted to add 10% uh, contingency as well so that we were prepared for any things that come up. What's going to be done with this money? Um, David Pomerantz gave me a rundown, and he said to keep in mind that the garage is 25 years old, and the work that they did last year was the first project that had been done to address maintenance in the garage for that period of time. So this new work um, will include 
waterproofing of the concrete stairs and landings that were replaced last year, expansion joint sealant work in multiple locations, new structural shear connectors in multiple locations, concrete T repairs, pour new concrete to replace spalled concrete on levels three and four, remove and replace precast floor sealants on the top level, and various repairs to overhead tees and beam flanges. Don't know what all that is, but <laughs> but I do know that the garage has has been undergoing significant renovations. You know, in addition to the renovate the structural renovations that we did last year, there's these, and then of course the whole new um, uh, pay system that will be installed as well. And these are all things that haven't been done for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Questions for Susan? Hearing none, then uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And that um, is our agenda for tonight. So a motion to adjourn finance. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Thank you. So we convene back in regular session. Um, and we start with the financial orders that were just recommended that everyone discussed uh, relative to the street acceptances with the one exception of Warner Row that has been withdrawn. Um, I'm not sure how the council wants me to proceed on this. I would move to um, take three of these out of the group. You want to pull Separate the three, three that, out. that would be subject to recusal? Yeah, and those would be uh, Church Street, um, Awaga Way, Baker. and Baker Hill Road. Yeah. Okay, so the motion is to take to all, all to take all but those. Take three. them all with the th with those three removed, for yes. the for, and is everyone Second okay that. with that? Yes. Okay. And to Second waive that motion. And to waive <laughs> reading, which we just had read. So. I understand. I really yeah, do. I don't want to read it. We're, all right. We're on a roll. Um, discussion on this, and 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 I think I think it deserves a discussion. So. Yeah. I, I, well, I, well, just to, and I know I've said this before, so bear with me. But if people at home, this is the first time they're kind of looking at this. I want them to understand the history behind this. Uh, it seemed like maybe 50 years ago it was probably just about six or seven years ago. This issue came up because of a ruling by the, I believe it was uh, the state was at the state supreme court, but one of the courts ruled that a city could not spend money on private ways. It had to, the, the, the street had to be approved as a public way in order for that street to use taxpayer money. We on the, um, we were on the joint committee of the DPW and the city council looked at this many years ago and was like, we didn't want to deal with this. Many of these streets were not made as, as public streets way, way back for a variety of reasons. Many times it was just clerical error. They just, these, everybody looks at them and say, well, they look like just about every other street. It just never came up before the city council. So that was one category of those streets were just streets that somebody somehow just overlooked <laughs> and they were streets that so you plowed them and you all the regular things you would do. There was another category of streets that came up starting when, as we started looking at the history. They seem to have a history from way back. Maybe it was the 30s or the 40s or the 50s. Maybe somebody's brother-in-law was on the DPW and so they basically plowed like a quarter mile dirt road and they started doing that. And then once they started doing that this year, then they did it the next year and it just kind of became a habit of doing it. And pretty soon that was, well, we've always plowed this quarter mile essentially driveway of somebody. So there was another category of a group of private ways that really look like private ways. And then there was a group in the middle that had not been approved, been approved as public streets, but neither were they completely private ways. They have a number of houses on them. Some folks could argue these really did look like, you know, kind of like our regular public streets. I want to commend, because when we looked at this way back, it was like nobody on the commission, we actually put this off for about two years because no one wanted to touch this because it was difficult to go to people who have had their street. Just imagine if you were one of those people for you buy a house on a street, it was being plowed, it had all the services, and suddenly you're told, for some folks, many years later, that in fact, this is not a public street and 
we may not be making this a public street because it's really a private way. There are only three of you on this street. There may be other reasons. The, the, DP, the BPW decided before they went out and did this, they worked for a long time on developing what would be the criteria by which we would look at these streets. What are kind of the point system that we would have? And I want to commend them for doing that. So they put this together because then it took it out of the realm of kind of people lobbying and saying, God, my street really deserves this. And they, they really looked at this and they really erred on the side of making, erred on the side of making these streets public streets. And this is the result. This is the bulk. We've done some others, but this is the bulk of that work. And I just want to commend them. So I thought it was important to give some of that history and that this was something we kind of was foisted upon us by a legal decision. And uh, I should note, there are more coming. And there are more There's there still yes. some yes. Of the, uh, there are more in the hopper. Um, and there are some that did not make the cut, and in which case there is an appeal process. To yes. So. Uh, Councilor Labarge, and then yes. Councilor um, O'Donnell. I want to echo what Councilor Specter was talking about. Um, when we were elected, 17 years ago, I recall how many private streets that we had made into city streets. And there's a lot of work involved there. And people just did not want their private streets way back. They wanted city streets because of the cost it was costing them then way back. I, I also too want to thank the Board of Public Works, especially with all these streets that are coming in now and having these public hearings, that's the value right there. Having those public hearings right on the streets with the residents, so it's a lot of work involved. Councilor O'Donnell. I would just like to ask, and maybe this is a question for Councilor Specter. Um, it's something that's been asked of me by a couple constituents, and that is, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, you could summarize some of the criteria that were used um, by the BPW to decide what should be public and what should should not and you know because it was clearly more than i know it when i see it you know you described the point system for example and i hate to ask you to go into excessive detail but i'm wondering you know, was it sidewalks was it plumbing i'm not going to go into much detail at all on that because okay. i i knew them but this was they started this process way back and i did know them then as i was afraid someone might ask me that I, i'll try as we're talking i'll try and go on the dpw website because they may be posted there so I'm going to take a look and Come see what you know well, I don't. I don't recall the criteria, but I, but I do recall that um, Terry Colhane said that they they were there. There was a point where they decided to reconsider some of them, and the criteria had changed. So that might be best. It might be best for someone from the DPW to explain what the criteria was and if it changed. Yeah. What the current ones are. Wait, so many of these streets actually have city structures and city systems already mm -hmm. under them. So, uh, drainage, water pipes and everything else uh, I, uh, also established under, with the understanding that they were actually public streets to begin with. Mm -hmm. so Council Murphy you <coughs> yeah I remember speaking with uh, Mr. Colhane about this and he said you know we set our criteria but as we went through the as we went through the process from street to street to street we could sort of tell that the way we were making the call was changing you know we learned more as we went along so then they went back to reconsider some of the earlier streets that maybe maybe they learned more in executing the process and went back and said now do we still agree with the decision we made in the beginning because there's a lot of these then they heard from lots of people lots of feedback at every street and they said you know I kind of changed the way we're making a call here let's do the beginning one over the beginning one's over again so there's some continuity between what we said on street one and what we said on street 31 mm -hmm. Fine. I think some of the other things that uh, I heard about on the uh, BPW conference committee are um, adequate off-street parking, uh, safety issues, you know, that the fire department can come in and adequately get to the entire street, turn around in the street and be able to come back out again. Um, uh, you mentioned, uh, Councillor Dwight, the, uh, the issue with drainage and um, sewer pipes that are adequate for drainage so there are a number of kind of city infrastructural things that are that need to be in place i don't know if councillor specter has found the exact list but I those are some list, of the things I'm that were um that i know kind of ended up uh 
keeping certain streets from, in fact, being approved. I, I, I would just say that <clears throat> I'm not sure we do need to go into the entire process tonight, and, and I agree that uh, the BPW could shed light on it maybe better than we can. But it sounds like there was a, a detailed, thoughtful process in place for this. So thank you. And if it's the council's pleasure, we could ask uh, Terry Culhane to come in and give a presentation he has already before, when we're, when, as we've been discussing this. We're, actually, now we're moving into year two with this discussion. There is <clears throat> there's some pressure, obviously, um, because, well, the way it feels today, it may snow in a week, and, and in which case we need to be able to, to address. The, the city did plow those streets last year without the official acceptance. We threw caution to the wind, but the fact is that what we did was we, we presented a good faith effort and the state was not going to tell us that we were violating the law, that we were making a good faith effort towards uh, fixing and adjusting this in the old law. And I would like to thank Public Works because um, it was our, it, at least it was our goal here, I think, to get as many of these taken care of before the next snow season as we could. So it's nice to see in August we have our first big batch, and I guess there, there's more coming pretty quickly, yeah. so that the bulk of the ones that they do recommend we will process in time for, for the snow removal season this year so people's services won't be interrupted. So thank you for that. Um, in Councilor Spector, I think, I think you've been excused from <laughs> I have. Your dog <laughs> to find us. I'm going right. through the agendas now of all of the meetings back to 1846. Now you, you stuck on Facebook. He's, <laughs> he's actually making excuses now. <laughs> so, my, my computer screen just went black. <laughs> That's really helpful. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, any further discussion on these items? And, and I'm just for the record, this is the acquisition of Prospect Court, Lawn Avenue, Strawberry Hill, Tyler Court, Wilder Place, Carpenter Ave, Bratton Court, Isabella Street, and Edwards Square. Um, all those, oh, actually, I'm sorry, this will require a roll call for all of those. Mm -hmm. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor yes. 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 Now we move on to Awaga, uh, Baker Hill Road, and Church. <coughs> I'll set the motion and put those on the floor. Should we divide them? So I think we should divide those out if that's to divide, divide them separately. Okay, let's start with uh, Church Street. And uh, uh, is there a motion? To put so moved. Second. Okay. Uh, Councilor Carney. I just for the record need to state that I'm a resident of Church Street and will recuse myself from voting on this street acceptance and any discussion thereof. Thank you. Is there any discussion um, relative to Church Street? Uh, and back to actually, I think it was Church Street that uh, in public comment that Mr. Kirby was struggling to identify as the street that, that the DPW was struggling. Uh, but not struggling, actually valiantly and successfully keeping dry <laughs> during the last flood event. Um, any other discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. 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 Abstain. No, Abstain, so. I guess, is the. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and now we move on to Awaga. And, 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 and if you want to do those together, it's fine. Okay. I'm the one. Oh, yeah. You're the one with the problem. The problem on those. Got two. it. All right. I'll accept a motion for Awaga uh, and Baker Hill Road. Sure. The motion's made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Um, any discussion on these? And as Council Murphy has identified, that he will be recusing himself on this vote because of his affiliation with both those streets. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? I abstain. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor White? Yes. Excellent. Um, 
Next up is the uh, financial order that's to accept the legislation regarding retired teacher health care costs uh, that uh, Susan's already discussed. Move to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion on this? Um, I should also like to point out, in 1994, the city paid 90 percent of the health insurance for the teachers. At, at that um, okay, uh, financial order for that financial order. I will, you want me to stall for a little bit? <laughs> okay, roll call, please. Yes. Council Murphy. Yes. Council yes. 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 That passes in first reading, and it will be, and as, and by the way, as well as all those street acceptances, it will be having a second reading at the next meeting for all of those. Uh, next up is to approve $1,500 for the Commission on Disabilities for supplies, events, travel, meetings, printing, and mailing during FY 2015. Move approval. The motion made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion on this? Roll call. Yes. 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 Uh, that also passes in first reading. Uh, next up is to appropriate forty-two thousand dollars from parking receipts reserved for appropriation to the parking garage structural repairs project uh, and appropriate or formally appropriated for uh, parking meteor upgrades. And forty-five thousand one hundred and seventy dollars from parking receipts reserved for appropriation to the parking garage structural repairs project. And there's been a request for two readings on this. I'll move for a screen. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call. Yes. 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 Suspend Rule 14. Second. Motion's been made to suspend Rule 14, which um, eliminates the requirement for delaying the second reading. Uh, any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Move second reading. Second. Second reading. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Council Chair. Yes. 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 Appropriations been made. Passed in two years. Uh, next up is the authorization for the mayor to execute and cause to be reported. Um, seven notices of activity and use limitation for city properties. There's also a request for two readings on this. No, this second. is a second. I'm sorry, this is a second reading. Right. Take three. Uh, it was only a, it was a month away. We can do three. No, but that's right. Uh, I'll accept the motion. Are there any further questions on this? Uh, the mayor was concerned that if you had any questions, I mean, it's it's obviously there's some urgency associated with this, um, but no other questions have, pardon the pun, percolated since. Uh, since our last discussion with Columbia Gas a month ago. Okay. Uh, the motion's made and seconded, so roll call, please. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Lavard. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. And streets again. This is second reading. This is up uh, Village Hill. This is to accept the public streets, uh, Village Hill North, Moser Street, uh, West, uh, Olander Drive North, and Ford Crossing. Accept the motion. Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion on these? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 That also passes in second reading. Uh, those streets are accepted. Move those next three as a group. Uh, the motion to move the next. Are we referring? No, no, we're oh, up. I'm to sorry. The warrant for the uh, primary. <coughs> number twenty. Sorry about that. So this is uh, though this is second reading for the uh, 
warrant for the state primary election that is scheduled for September 9th of this year. Uh, I'll accept the motion. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Motion's made and second. Any further discussion on this? No one wants to change the date. Okay. <laughs> Roll call, please. <laughs> yes. 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 Okay. This is the next. So I'd move uh, numbers 20, 21, and 22 as a group. And this is for a referral. And the motion is there a second? Second. second. Okay. <laughs> We've got uh, uh, this entire side of the room just second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad Funny. that's what I like to see. I like to see you guys on the game. This is excellent. <laughs> uh, that what we're referring are bike lanes, uh, proposed bike lanes for North Main, Florence, and Prospect Street, and that's to go to uh, refer to the committee on rules, or orders, appointments, and ordinances. Also, parking prohibited at all times on Main Street, in Florence. Uh, that's also referred to ordinance. Uh, also, limited time parking on Main Street, Florence, and that's also to be referred to ordinance. And um, any discussion on the referral? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Do you want to roll call those, right? Not a kind referral. Of referral. Oh, the referrals are yeah. okay. we, I mean, the, we, we torture yeah. her enough. No. I think Pam <laughs> thinks we can spare her that. So the voice vote is good enough to send it for <laughs> referral. So, so once again, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, next up is um, the zoning map for farms, forests, and rivers. And this comes a positive recommendation um, from the Committee on Economic and Deve uh, Community Development, Housing, and Land Use, the Planning Board, and the Committee on Rules, Orders, Appointments, and Ordinances. And this would be the first reading. Uh, is there a motion? Okay. There's a second. Uh, I, I have a, any, yeah. If someone could speak to this, um, even though it did come up in the committee I was on and I remember supporting it, I couldn't even tell you right now the details of this clearly, kind of given the explanation and the rationale for it directly. So um, if someone else on our council could do that, that would be great. If not, so you feel can? Okay. Council Down, you want to take a stab at that? This, I have to borrow your tablet, though, for a second. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so let's see. Um, there's the, the most restrictive, most strict zoning district, and there's a conservation in the city, is uh, Special Conservancy, which is floodplain. And, and the second most restrictive is Farm, Forests, and Rivers. And what this proposes to do is simply take existing conservation land that is currently neither. So in other words, it's conservation land, but it might be URA, URB, URC, might be rural, suburban, whatever, and move it into the second strictest district unless it's already in there or unless it's more strict. Uh, but at the same time, you can't develop conservation land anyway, so in, in the sense, it's symbolic. You. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, jogging memory. Um, if I may direct a question to you then in that respect, I mean, is so as you say, this is just essentially symbolic. It's, it's not something that actually changes any conditions, terms, or, or mandates, right? That's correct. Yeah, it's kind of conceptually positive if you're in favor of conservation. Because practically speaking, right. the, the building restrictions are the same. But, um, um, going forward in the future, <clears throat> Does this make it easier for developers to at least understand their limitations or, or, or property owners that have a clearer sense of what the guidelines are? I don't know if I could speak to that except to speculate that uniformity is easier to understand, you know, and only in that sense. I don't think it requires, though, that if there's new conservation land, correct me if I'm wrong, if there's new conservation land, it won't instantly go into farm forests and rivers. So we may be back putting more of it in there in the future. So if that gets at your question, I don't think. Yeah, that does, actually. OK. Any further discussion on this? And, and as I said, this is the first reading. And, and if you have more questions, we can have someone from the planning office uh, come right. talk to this. It's just that they're, they're booked tonight. 
so that everyone understands. And if, if constituents have questions, please refer them to your council or us or call the planning office and we, we'll have uh, hopefully answers for you by the time our next meeting rolls around. So the, no further discussion. Um, in first reading, please call the roll. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Lavar. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Next up is the order on um, affordable units. Um, actually, I'll read the ordinance here for you. The uh, This is an ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, providing that the Code of Ordinances for the City of Northampton be amended by revising Chapter 350, Section 2.1, Definitions of said Code, providing that affordable housing units created in the city qualify under Massachusetts official housing inventory. And change the following definition under 2.1 as follows. Affordable units, this is a definition. Housing units which, and which has been, and the language that's been struck, the planning board finds, that will be deleted, are affordable for rent or purchase by households making 80% of the median household income for Northampton, and to the extent practicable, are only available to households whose income does not exceed 80% of the median income as calculated by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development with adjustments for family size. Added, the additional language is, these units shall be eligible uh, for credit under the Mass General Law Chapter 40B, Massachusetts Subsidized Affordable Housing Inventory. There shall be uh, <coughs> provided that there are deed restrictions, easements, covenants, and other <coughs> mechanisms to ensure that the units are affordable for a minimum of 99 years for rental housing or minimum, and this is additional, for rental housing or minimum 30 years for home ownership units. Um, uh, and as I said, I, uh, uh, Carolyn Mish left a message with me. I wasn't able to get back to it, but the, um, um, the principal objective here is to get credit. I mean, this is not too dissimilar to what Susan presented on that, um, uh, about uh, the net school spending. This is the same thing. Is we each for folks who don't know, <coughs> communities in the state of Massachusetts under Chapter 40B are required to maintain. 10% affordability within their communities. We exceed that. We exceed that. But we also have units that qualify and don't get credit for qualifying under Chapter 40B. And this language allows and facilitates and allows that. And this is allowed under Mass General Law. And it's just that we're we're shining our apple, as it were. And I think that was the case here. And that, that um, our inventory will not our our catalog will increase as a result of this change. It's just that the inventory, there's virtually no change. And then also anticipating. Uh, Council of Board. Yes, I just, I had a lengthy talk with Pat Keller today because mm -hmm. I was really concerned about the 80% on the affordable housing. And I think, Councillor, you were a counselor at that time when we were doing on Perspet Road through Doug Cole, that huge subdivision. Mm -hmm. And there was supposed to have been affordable housing, which we were all happy about that. And I just wanted to read an example of why this needs to be done. It says, Rich Madowitz is doing the Emerson Way subdivision, now which has a requirement for eight affordable housing units there. It never said in the planning board decision that the units needed to be able to be counted on the state inventory. It requires more work with regard to marketing, doing a lottery, unit sizes, restricted sale prices. So Wayne, Carolyn, and Housing Partnership wanted to make sure any affordable units created locally are counted on the state inventory. And that's what happened on Emerson Y. Well, that, and that's a perfect example of what, yeah. Uh, uh, Councilor Adams. <coughs> uh, Mr. Fiden told us at a subcommittee meeting that we're at 11.4%. We've been as high as 12.4% and as low as 11.1%. And by the way, uh, for communities that don't maintain 10% affordability, 
they are subject to actually developers being able to bypass a comprehensive permit. <laughs> comprehensive permit. Yeah. So that, uh, and some of you may know that East Hampton experienced this recently, this issue. That, and, um, but since this community has been committed to maintaining affordability, and by the way, these affordability standards, HUD standards, they do it in a region. So. 80% of median income is not based on Northampton, it's based <coughs> on the region, which also includes Hamden County, parts of Hamden County. So, and we don't, I don't, I don't think we have to wade too far into that because we have no control over that. But that's, that's what qualifies as affordability. Sometimes people um, don't understand, and this is median income, this is not poverty level. So, uh, Councilor O'Donnell. Um, <clears throat> I think that's a especially good point because we're in the middle of, of rewriting a lot of our zoning law. So the last thing we would want is for all that to kind of be abrogated by, uh, you know, a developer comes in and for don't meet the 10%. <coughs> the other relevant part of this, which I think deserves highlighting briefly, it, actually it was the part that caught my eye more. It was um, the distinction now between units that have to be affordable for 99 years if they're rental versus uh, but if you buy an affordable home. And so that is, it was 99 years, which is a long time. Um, and now it's gonna be 30 years. And uh, you know that just uh, popped out at me and it may pop up to anyone who's looking at this and saying, well, why are we reducing the number, the amount of time that a unit is affordable? And I think it's, it's simply because if you buy a house like on Emerson Way, that's affordable. I think some of those are for sale, right? They're not, they are, they're all for sale, they're not rental um, or will be. And um, if you put 30 years of equity into it, you kind of ought to be able to get it back and not necessarily have to uh, keep it affordable for 100 years. And that is, in fact, a way, uh, which I think is a point the housing partnership made as well, to help people um, build equity. And it's actually a form of upward mobility, in a sense. So I think that's a, actually a positive change. Um, Councilor Klein? Well, I, I thought you were pointing. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Um, I was just trying to get in front of uh, <laughs> uh, okay. I, I just have a question about I see that there we have a positive recommendation from uh, Committee on Rules and right. Appointments and Ordinances but no recommendation from Ed Lou and I'm just wondering about why um, the chair of Ed Lou do you want to address that I, I, can't, I can't recall off the top of my I, I okay. think it was because we decided to wait until the housing partnership had weighed in that's right well, I thought we voted against that we voted not to I believe we voted uh, no recommendation, knowing that it would proceed to ordinance and so forth. Yeah, that's Because yeah. we didn't want to come back, perhaps just for just for that one <coughs> ordinance. So it wasn't the absence of a recommendation was not Correct. a disrecommendation. Correct. Yes. Correct. Okay. Any other questions on this? Oh, Council Labarge. Yes. Council President, I thought that <coughs> you were into affordable housing, that if you went, just like at the ice pond, we have a mixture, that if you went to go ahead and sell your home, it had to be sold affordable. Of course, that the new language or the proposed men language? But it would still have to be sold affordable, correct? For 30 years. Yes, okay. For 30 years, um, and that, and I don't, and I believe that covenant expires after 30 years regardless of who owns it. So. And to Councilor O'Donnell's point is that it actually promotes an opportunity because people invest in their homes right. with the hope of one having shelter and a place to live, but also building equity to get loans against it, to to be able to actually make some more money possibly on the sale of their house or as their mm -hmm. family expands. Um, no other people, you and I, when we buy a house, we're not restricted by um, our ability to sell it should it become worth more at some point. So, mm -hmm. um, and that's, I think, Council O'Donnell. Makes sense. Uh, any further discussion? Mm -hmm. uh, roll call, please. Council Klein. Yes. Council Labarge. Yes. Council Murphy. Yes. Council O'Donnell. Yes. Council Yes. Council Spector. Yes. Council Adams. Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. Uh, the last item is the parking prohibited at all times on Prospect Street, and this is second reading, and I'll accept a motion for that. Move, uh, move approval. Second. 
any further discussion on this? I don't know if folks probably know the roads have all, a lot of uh, roads have been chewed up and that uh, Prospect Street is one of them and uh, supposedly getting ready for repaving on one, f one fell swoop or swell foop. Uh, and uh, whether it rains or not. And you'll see some digesting going on Prospect Street, which is, I think, found pretty interesting. Um, so with that, uh, with that notation that had absolutely nothing to do with what's being <laughs> written here, yeah. uh, I'll accept that. So is there a motion put on the floor? We've already yeah. done that. So early. I just am so concerned. Great. Right. Roll call, please. <laughs> Yes. 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 There's no new business. Um, I have no announcements. Um, I will accept a mo uh, motion to adjourn. We'll move to adjourn. Whoa, that was quick. Okay, all those in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Thank you. <laughs>